Hello there, welcome to a new video. In today's video I want to I want to show you why you shouldn't always use synthesizers in able to move. I normally tend to use synthesizers when I want to play chords or melodic parts, but I've been exploring how to use the drum racks for that and honestly it's been very eye-opening. I found a few techniques that I will share with you. So let's get into it and see why you should use these drum racks more often to play melodic parts. Okay, so one big limitation that we need to get out of the way, for example, if I have this note, which I sampled from the OP1, I can't play a chord with it. So what I do if I want to play chords is to sample the same notes in four different paths. So I normally do it horizontally. If you want to play chords, you can play one note here, one note here, one note in this one, and one note in, in this one, for example. I'm going to have all empty clips and let's start a, a share project. Okay, so I want to play C major seventh. Okay, so that is one voice of the chord. Then we go to another one. Okay, so I'm going to record this one now. Now we can record the other one. And now let's record the last one. Okay, so now that we have all the notes, uh, I, I sampled some other notes in the other part. And I'm going to show you one of the techniques that I like to use when, when playing this approach. By the way, what I do is to sample always a C, so I know that the color pad here is going to be a C. So I know that this is a D, I know this is a B, so it's always the same. You can transpose it. But I like to know that the one here is always a C and I and I like to know that because sometimes if you want to play uh, it's better that I show you actually. Say that I want to play this line this line. If the line is something like that, every time you go back to C, you can play a different pattern, something more simple. So it gives the melody a lot of dynamism because every time you go back to C, you're changing samples. And so we can try to record something. Let's overdub. And this trick also works very well for sort of like grooves. So you can play something like. So every t you're playing two of each, but every time you press a new one, you're switching samples. So it gives a nice groove. Okay, so this sounds sort of fine. But now something that you can also do, which I find very useful as well, is if, if you are unhappy with any of these samples, you can switch them for something else. You can resample something from here, you can use a mic, or you can resample something from an external source. In this case, I'm gonna use the OP1, and I'm going to try to find a sound. And I'm going to switch one of the notes in the chords. So for example, I'm going to change this voice. Now I press the pad. 
and boom. Now this sample is different. So that way you get like a lot of flexibility. Actually, it would be very nice if Ableton could implement some more polyphony for each one of these pads. So you don't have to use so many pads only for one chord. But still, it gives you the option to, to have like a polyphonic multi-sample chords. So that is pretty cool. Now let's try to find some bass. I also sample some basses here. So I'm gonna maybe use this one. Or maybe I can try to find a new one. Ah, let's let's sample this one here. Boom. That is good for me. Okay, so let's record that. we have something going and also the good thing that you can that you can do using this approach is that if, if it feels too complex or there are too many things going on and maybe you want to remove some voices it's very simple by muting This way you find what it's uh, what you, what you can remove or maybe what things you can use for operation. For example, I want to start with this idea and add elements little by little. So I could, you know, remove this, bim bam boom, and then this way come up with progressions and stuff like that. That's basically what I do. I think it's a very good way to approach music making in able to move by using these drum racks. If you see in this project, I only have drum racks. Sometimes I think it's like too many in total. There will be 64 sound slots. If you use one of them only for synth sounds like I do here, I only have synth sounds here. Then you can use, for example, one for synths, another one for bass, then another one for drums. And then another one for more drums if you want to. Another thing I wanted to show you is that this composition technique of using if we put down a simple a simple beat. This technique of using the pad, then one of the 16th levels, then another pad, another one of the 16th level, then another pad. It, it works very well to give a lot of dynamism to the beat. So we can record something like that. Now we can put the drum. You can also edit independently stretch factors. So, you know, some tips that you can use in your compositions using Ableton Move. I hope this was useful to you. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel because I put a new video every single Friday. I talk about gear, I talk about music, so I'm sure you'll be interested in it if you like this content. So, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one and peace.